Wonderful. Um, so as I was saying, welcome to this evening's webinar. Uh, my name's Jasmine and I'm part of the admissions team here at Escape Studios. So tonight we have Alex Williams and he'll be demonstrating how to animate an eight-legged creature using the industry's leading 3D animation software, which is Maya. Uh, so Alex is a film animator and a cartoonist who has not only written books such as QC Cartoon Series, but he's also worked on well-known titles such as Harry Potter and the Half-Blooded Prince, The Lion King, Pocahontas and Looney Tunes back in action. His uh, passion for animation makes him the best person to be hosting this special character animation webinar. So uh, throughout the webinar this evening, Alex will be taking questions. So please feel free to submit any questions that you might have in the chat box. Um, and um, I'll hand straight over to Alex now. He's got lots to get through, but I will be back at the end to tell you uh, what's going on here at Escape. Uh, over to you, Alex. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jasmine. So uh, it's a pleasure to be here. My name is Alex Williams, and thank you for that very kind introduction. Uh, and I've been an animator for about 25 years now, and I've worked on uh, uh, about 25 animated feature films from Who Framed Roger Rabbit through to uh, the Lion King, and, and more recently I've been doing a lot of visual effects work. Um, so this, this uh, exercise that we're going to do today with a spider is very much geared towards doing visual effects work with an eye to developing a demo reel that could get you hired at places like Framestore, Moving Picture Company, Double Negative, Cinesight, the kind of big London visual effects houses that now do so much work on big Hollywood feature films. So in terms of uh, working in London, and, and uh, in specifically in Soho, it is very much the case now that we're looking more at creature rather than character animation. Now, of course, the principles behind creature animation are no different from character animation, uh, except there's more of an emphasis on observing real life and observing nature uh, and trying to mimic real life creatures so that you can reproduce them accurately so that it feels natural and, and believable. And in a way, it's a tougher brief than doing the kind of traditional cartoony animation that I grew up with because it's much more specific. Now, the reason, or rather, it's much more demanding um, and uh, arguably more, uh, more difficult. And the reason I picked a spider today uh, is partly because there's this very nice free rig out there um, called Ra. Um, uh, which I hope you've all been able to uh, download from Creative Crash. Uh, and also because if you're doing creature work, uh, there's, a, there's a lot of work in making monsters, creatures. Harry Potter and The Hobbit both featured uh, spiders. Uh, and it's always nice if you're applying for a, a position at a studio to be able to actually uh, have the kind of work that the studio is hiring for on your demo reel. So if you're hiring for a job on, say, The Hobbit, you want dragons and spiders on your reel uh, because that's the kind of thing that producers are going to be looking for. Um, so th there's something about anima animating eight-legged creatures which looks very, very complicated, but it's actually really quite simple. And the beauty of this technique that I'm going to show you today is it takes an apparently complex motion and reduces it to something nice and simple. So first of all, I'm just going to show you a few slides. We're going to start with, uh, with the spider. That's uh, the, this, this Ra spider that's, that you'll find at Creative Crash. Um, obviously, whenever you're uh, looking, at, um, looking to, to do some serious animation, you always want to be able to start with live action reference. Now, when I started animating, that was actually something that was comparatively difficult because difficult, difficult, you, you had to go to some length to get good reference for stuff. But now, because of YouTube, there's tons of reference material out there. So there's no excuse for not doing your homework uh, and looking for a good uh, spider reference. So why spiders? Because they're cool. Uh, I'm going to show you a simple formula to animate them. And they're in Harry Potter and lots of other monster movies. Now, the basic formula that we're doing today is taken from a book called The Animator's Survival Kit. And uh, this is, uh, if, if, as an animator, if you only buy one book on animation, this is the one you want. Um, and the, actually, it's in the expanded edition uh, that the section on creatures is to be found. The original book doesn't have any. Um, but the way that a spider walks is actually very like a human walk, only 
instead of two sets of legs, there are eight sets of, sets of legs. And just in the way that a human walk, in a human walk, each leg opposes the other, so it is with a spider walk. The second set of legs is going to oppose the front set of legs, and then the third set of legs will be the same as the front pair. So what we'll essentially be doing in this exercise is copying and pasting curves so as to minimize the actual amount of work that we're going to do. We're really just going to animate one or two control curves and copy them. Finally, the fourth set of legs is the same as the second set. So that's how this works. Uh, there's the rig. Hopefully you've all had the project brief. You've all been able to have a look um, and uh, 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 you've been able to find it okay. Now, I notice there's a question here. Um, uh, going to Creative Crash to get free wigs. Are there other rigs available at other sites? And absolutely, Creative Crash is only one site where you can get free rigs. There are lots of places uh, where you can get free stuff. If you just Google free Maya rigs, you'll find all kinds of um, hits. Uh, and if you go to places like the 11 Second Club, you'll find um, free stuff advertised there. And yes, there are also free rigs for, for 3D Studio Max, but it's important to remember that if you're working in Soho, uh, or indeed in Los Angeles, in fact, most places that do visual effects work in animation, Maya is now the dominant package. That's, it's not to say that 3D Studio Max is not used in the industry, it is, uh, but um, increasingly, certainly in London, and in my experience in LA, Maya is dominant. So it's best to have um, uh, experience in that software. So we're going to start by setting our timeline from frame 1 to frame 17. We'll turn on our infinity curves, and we'll do the front left leg on a 16-frame cycle. Um, and the basic positions will be the front leg contact at frame 1. At frame 9, we'll have the leg in the back position. Uh, and then at 17, that will be the same as frame 1. Then we'll add a breakdown pose at frame 13, where the leg rises in the y-axis and comes forward, and that should get you a walking leg. Uh, and then we'll copy and paste. Um, I don't actually want to spend too much time on the theory stuff here, so I think I'm just going to cut to the chase and go straight to the rig, which is here. And this is the rig that I've imported from, um, uh, uh, from TurboSquid. And you'll see I've got the um, uh, thing loaded up in the outliner there. Uh, I'll just minimize that for now. And this is a standard. This this is a standard animator's layout that we're looking at here. This this three pane split top, and you can find this by going to panels, layouts. Here we go. Three panes split top like that, and you'll get. Uh, uh, I've got a perspective view on the right. The perspective view on the left. We'll change this to the camera view on the right when we set up a camera. And then you always want the graph editor underneath because that's where you're going to do most of your um, work with the control curves. Um, now, somebody else has just asked a question here uh, saying, do spiders run in the same way as bipeds? Uh, well, obviously they don't, but they do in the sense that the, the legs, the two front legs, do oppose one another in exactly the same way that biped legs do. The big difference is we've got four of these guys, so we're going to copy and paste them. So if I go to frame one here, actually what I want to do, um, and I'm actually going to go to my own project briefing here, uh, and I'm going to uh, do what it says in the project briefing because it's tried and tested, and I don't want to mess it up. Uh, and if I go to frame uh, down here in the set in the in this box for setting the end time of the animation, I'm going to type 17. So that's down there on the right-hand side. Set that to 17. And at frame 1, uh, that's obviously frame 1. And actually, just before I chark, I'm ch start, I'm just going to set my check my preferences. That's this little button down here. So I'm going to click on that and just make sure that my playback speed is set to 24 frames a second. And it isn't it's set to play every frame, which I don't want. I want that to be real-time 24 frames a second. And as I'm sure you all know, 24 frames a second is the rate that film runs through the uh, gate of a, uh, of a film camera. And that's been the case since the dawn of film, and we still animate at 24 frames a second. Unless you're working on The Hobbit, in which case you animate at 48, and you drive yourself crazy and make everything way more complicated than it needs to be. So I'm now going to click Save, um, and then go back to my perspective view up here. 